So, uh, hello everybody in HCC. It's fantastic to be with you today, and I'm here with the amazing Liz Thring. Say hello, Liz. You Hi, can... guys. Lovely to see you. Fantastic. So, we're just uh, just going to hear a little bit from Liz today. I uh, just want to find out a bit of her testimony. And I think what's important when we talk about testimony, we're not just talking about the initial moments when I found faith, but something far more of our journey and our discovery over Christ, of Christ over a period of time. So, Liz, when, when did like faith first become real to you? Um, so I grew up in a Christian home. Then my parents went to um, a community um, church. <clears throat> um, and um, I, I was always encouraged in my faith, but I would say that I didn't really... Um, make a decision myself until I was um, about 12 or 13. Um, so I went on one of the summer camps that our church had organized. We went to um, the Bracken Beacons yeah. and um, we had uh, loads of time of like worship and teaching and um, doing um, things like those pony trek um, rides that, that you get to do um, that are terrifying and I fell off um, and, and lots of fun stuff. But I do remember um, being really confronted with my own kind of sin and my own um, walk with God then. So it was a, a, a time in a sense where um, there was loads of space. There was, um, there was just time to reflect so much like we've got now, really, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, time, to, time and space to reflect and to really... Um, to listen to the stuff that I already knew. I'd had a lot of teaching, but it was a, a case of actually really connecting. Um, so I do remember that really clearly. And the presence of God, I, I just remember that really clearly as well um, around that time. Um, so that was when I would say that I um, purposefully kind of turned to God rather than just academically knowing loads of good Bible stories, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Fantastic. And so, and then, so you got married, had some children. So tell us a quick bit about your family. Um, so um, we, um, Jim and I met in London. I went down to, I went away to uni um, uh, to do a teaching degree. And then mm -hmm. I went to um, London for my first job, which terrified my mother um, to the point where she didn't actually come with me. <laughs> to drop me off but anyway um so my dad dropped me off and then I was in the middle of Ilford for um quite a long period of time I stayed there for five years and that was another time of just space I'm not answering your question sorry Matt but I'm just going to say anyway um that was another time of space yeah. where I just kind of had gone away from God really at uni okay. um, I'd had a lot of periods of time where I had uh, really wide open choices and um I got quite into just being very self-sufficient so um god kind of brought me back um so that that job in london was a time when i um i spent more time i suppose just seeking what my relationship with god looked like apart from everyone else or anything else i didn't really have any friends down there to start with and all that kind of thing so then i met jim um and he was um going to the church that i went to um and then in 2000 we had hannah um so yeah super and anybody else come along at all and then um we moved to um swindon in 2004 and um isaac arrived in our lives um which has been glorious come on <laughs> so, so that's been really good Fantastic. And you mentioned there, and, and I think it's so uh, important that uh, you mentioned that university went through a difficult time. Um, Jim shared, um, and I know he's writing a book. Has he started it? He started it. I keep giving him a gentle oh, I'm sorry, his gentle. story. Yeah. But, uh, and, and, and Jim shared with, with us as church how, you know, there was a time where he went away from God and, and very much rejected all the stuff he'd stood on. What, what was that time like for you and what sustained you? Because that was a number of years, wasn't it? Yeah, so that was, um, 
um, tangibly nine years, but I would say 10 probably because uh, nothing ever happens just as a bolt from the blue. Um, nothing ever happens just, you don't just wake up one morning not, not believing in God, do you? So um, it, was a, it was a long period of time, um, which, um, you know, praise God, we're, we um, were sustained all through that, both of us, um, regardless of where Jim placed himself. And I really know that. I really can see that he, um, God, God intervened. There was a phrase that I, I remember praying repeatedly over that time, which was God so far and no further. And I feel like um, he drew a line of, of what would be, uh, what would happen in our lives that would be for the negative and would actually establish um, the positive as well. So it was a, it was a really, it was a tough time. It was something where I felt like um, for some people it might not be um, a particularly big deal, but it felt like um, for me and for Jim, obviously, um, our world's changed out of all recognition. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that for me felt like it just fell apart totally. So it was um, a really unsettling time for, for a, probably quite a long season. And then God kind of journeys with you and enables you to establish new ways of functioning and new ways of um, being in relationship and uh, of um, maybe uh, understanding someone who seems so different and loving them. So. Um, it was definitely a journey. I think I look back on that time as um, with regret in many ways. I have looked back on that time with regret, but I, I think now I feel like I don't so much really because I think um, there's things that I've discovered along the way where I just think God really kept me, kept my faith strong. Um, and um, yeah, um, even till recently, I, I found some books that um, I'd written in in that season. And I just thought, gosh, I did still hold on to my faith. I know that, mm. I, know that I did, but I always felt it was just the tiniest bit. So um, just to rediscover those books while we were clearing some stuff out um, was really good because it kind of spoke to me that that I still did journey with God and God journeyed with me at that time. Um, but what he did more really was um, really strip away my kind of Western fluffy definition of relationship and what that looks like in terms of marriage um, and my dependence on man um, and um, my fear as well. I think um, I probably started that season with just being very afraid of what the consequences would be. Um, but, um, but I know that, that God uh, demonstrated that he's just so much bigger than absolutely anything. Um, that the enemy threw us. Yes, yes. So um, yeah, over that ten-year period, God was really faithful, um, and um, I'm probably a different person today because of it. And I think our relationship, my relationship with Jim, and my relationship with God is um, totally different because of it. Yeah. Um, and so that's just a real blessing um, and fruit. Yeah, and just to say, like, woo, well done, you, Joanne, for holding on during all that time. And, and I love, like you said, you know, that um, you can look back and think, was I really in faith? Do you know I mean? And, uh, and yet that even just keeping your head above water sort of thing um, is stunning because that's been transformational, not just for you and Jim and the family, but actually for us as church family as well. So talk a little bit then uh, as we finish off just about the last sort of two or three years, because uh, we, we just, I was just reminiscing with the first time I met you, which is probably about seven years ago, you're not the same person, are you? You're a bit, you're a bit more fiery. You're a bit more excited. Come on. What, Come on, God. Uh, I, yeah, I just feel very, um, very blessed to um, just know that passion. I think that's something that I'd always considered was I had, in some ways, I had all the tools in my toolbox, but I didn't really have the, the kind of the power lead, perhaps. Um, other people have kind of described that that kind of metaphor but um i think um <clears throat> i think it's probably started with jim coming back to faith really which is a, a bit longer than the last two or three years it's mm -hmm. you'd correct me probably um four or five um but just seeing what that looks like it was a, a journey that he made kind of on his own um with god and he literally um rocked up one day uh, we were coming back from London and um, we were in the car and he 
told me about the fact that he um, had decided that he uh, wanted to come back to faith and he wanted to come to church with us the following day. And um, fairly tricky for me, but I, I was in a car going at 70 miles an hour at the time, so I couldn't jump up and down. Um, but that's what I wanted to do. And, um, you know, some of my initial thoughts around that time was, why didn't I know? It felt like a bit, a bit of a kind of a repeat of, why didn't I know that he walked away from faith? And, and then why didn't I know that he was coming back? I remember saying to one of my friends, I think, I don't know what's going on with Jim at the moment. He's just being really nice. Um, it was just kind of throwaway kind of work. But God was just working in his heart. And it kind of struck me that um, it, it had to be that way um, because God actually did that in him, just him and God. And it just strikes me how individually God deals with us. And if we let him, if we say yeah. that he will not, uh, he will not come near us. Um, not not come near us um, that he will uh, journey with us um, so so that was extraordinary and then um, following on from that it's just been a season of like really um, noticing what God's doing I've done lots of kind of reading and journeying with God and just discovering what um, relationship looks like really I suppose that's the core of it is that that joy in um, relationship with God um, which kind of changes everything. Um, so that's what I've been sewing into. So that looks different all the time. It sometimes it looks like taking part in something like you know for us doing um, the um, development group. What is it called? What do you call it now? Yeah. Training school. Um, it looked like doing that for a season. Then for other other seasons, it's looked like just reading. For other seasons, it's looked at. Um, just spending long periods um, just on your own um, listening to God. But I don't think, you know, even through the last few years, it's never really looked the same. It's just, for me, it's about um, listening to God and what he's speaking into your life. If there's no, nothing consistent particularly that I can put my finger on. Um, mm -hmm. apart from yeah. that he's always speaking to us and he, he always wants to um, do that. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for being Keep honest up. and open, uh, and um, it would be great just uh, if you wouldn't mind just praying for us all. Is that all right? Okay. How did I not see that coming? <laughs> First online prayer. Uh, oh. Lord, we just want to embrace again, um, thanking you for this season, Lord. It's so hard uh, to... Um, just stay this course and we just want to um, choose to thank you and um, choose to lean into you again today in a really um, conscious way. Um, I think sometimes it can feel like being intentional about that is, is harder than being busy. Um, it just means we have to um, put our will and our physical and our mental and our emotional stuff to one side and really intentionally um, choose your presence so lord i just pray for um for us today that at these times or that you would be developing in each of us um the things that you that you know us so well that you would just continue working in us and that we would be uh willing to to let you do that and to listen we just thank you that you're always speaking lord pray that you just be with us today in all the mundane stuff and all the extraordinary stuff. Amen. 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 Fire.